I'm really looking forward to this chat. Her name is Liz Fry, and she's on the line now. Hey, Liz. Hi, Liam. Hi. Thank you so much for doing this today. It's a serious subject, but like I said uh, earlier, it's uh, it's got a really positive spin to it, and uh, I, I, I just congratulate you for what you're doing. So I guess we have to start from the beginning. How did the retreat in, uh, in Taranaki get going in the first place? Absolutely, and thanks so much, Leanne, for this opportunity. I love the chances to talk about who we are and what we do because it is so special and it is unique. And um, so, yes, yeah, so I'm really grateful for this. So it came about um, in the idea came about around 2012 when the founders lost their daughter Carrie to cancer and they had been um, very much staying at the Ronald McDonald houses and they were very inspired by um, the setup there in terms of that there was supportive um, staff around, there was a supportive team that you got to understand that you were walking the journey alongside other people and that, you know, even with some of the devastating things that were going on in people's lives, you know, there was still that connection and that togetherness that, um, you know, was attained through that. And they very much wanted Carrie's legacy to, um, you know, continue into mm. their work. And so they looked at the idea of setting up um, somewhere similar that people could come for that time out, you know, and our sort of line is a, a space to breathe. And with that, with it definitely being free for people to come to stay so that, you know, money's no barrier to people getting support. And, you know, we are a suicide prevention initiative, but you do not have to be having um, suicidal thoughts to come and benefit. You know, we want to be the support way, way back, you know, from the edge of the cliff before people have even considered, mm. you know, that as an option. And, um, yeah, help people that are having struggling, ha having struggles, whatever, you know, it is that um, has caused them to be in that place. Mm. What's your history? Because I know you, you do life coaching. Why do you feel so passionately? Have you dealt with this personally yourself, Liz, within so close I, friends or family? So I've had a mental health journey of my own um, with depression, anxiety. Um, I've also struggled with codependency, uh, alcohol abuse and self-harm in the past. Mm. And so that's very much been part of my journey. And... Uh, Combining that with um, being a nurse, working for the prison service, um, running a pub for six years, all back in the UK, um, you know, it's all always been about people, and I've always felt like I've got something inside of me. Um, you know, how how can I bring this into the mix? And that's when I came across life coaching. And mm. so, you know, I do believe that when we've been through some struggles ourselves, not only do we get it, but you know, there is that part point where we go, okay, I'm ready now to help others. Um, you know, that may exp be experiencing something similar um, and, you know, that message of sharing with people that, you know, they're not on their own, they're not the only one going through this. You mm. know, sure, their particular situations may be you know, unique to them, but, you know, there are others around them that certainly can help and certainly get it. I remember one um, person that I was coaching was just like, oh, finally finally someone that gets it you know and they shared the story of getting some support before and someone was literally sitting with a textbook on their lap um kind of thing and mm. you know he said about someone else that you know he was dealing with anger management at the time and he he said to the therapist he said have you ever been angry have you ever punched a wall and um you know the therapist wasn't able to answer that question so it's like you know a lot of the team um with taranaki retreat have had their journey with mental health in different ways and you know it is a team that get it yeah yeah well that's the thing how big is your team um little <laughs> <laughs> so we yeah, had a team okay. this morning and uh, yes, there were 17 of the 19 present um, and, but we do have a, a team of, gosh, it must be over 200 volunteers now and they are just incredible and we would not be able to function without them and they do anything from um, supporting our guests that come for a residential stay or potentially helping with outreach um, where support workers meet with people in the community to have that sort of ongoing support. Some donate their time to fundraising, some donate their time to sort of cleaning or baking or cooking. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's an incredible um, team that, uh, yeah, is super proud to be a part of. 
we certainly couldn't do without our volunteers, that's for sure. Incredible. What is it about the Taranaki that makes it so caring? I mean, it's it's interesting. We could do with these places all over the country, but really, uh, we don't have that uh, luxury yet, do we? No, sadly not. But, uh, you know, if anyone's listening is in, inspired, we're not precious. We would love to, um, you know, share what we found works for us and, um, you know, sort of uh, pass that blueprint on um, because absolutely the country needs them in probably every region. Uh, but, yeah, you know, when um, you come into Taranaki Retreat itself, um, it's we describe it as a bubble of love. I remember going there for the first time and sort of through the gate and it was just like amazing. It's set in such a beautiful residential setting just under the Monga. And so, yeah, it's mm. just such, it is that space to breathe. And, um, you know, it's provided in that uh, setting as well. So, um, Leanne, are you okay if I talk a bit about how it sort of works in terms of coming for a stay and that side of it? Please, I, w- I would love to hear that. And I think listeners would like to hear how, how it works practically as well. Awesome. So, yeah, we take um, welcome guests from across the country. So although it's called Taranaki Retreat, um, people from all across New Zealand can uh, come and have a stay with us. And we have stays available for five days or ten days. And often we get asked, well, you know, what actually can you do in that time? You know, often you hear about retreats and their weeks and months um, type thing. But we believe it's very much that sort of chance to pause and chance to just sort of slow down and check in with where we're at and get some of those ongoing links um, into place, ongoing connections and supports um, so that, you know, it's not just at the end of a five day or a 10 day stay, people go, you know, we don't just sort of wave them off and say, good luck, um, kind <laughs> yeah. of thing that, yeah. you know, back into the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You mm. want to bump sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, they have, they know that this is just the very, very, very first chapter, um, of, you know, potentially the start of their healing journey and we'll be looking to connect if they're out of the region, we'll be looking to connect them in with, other supports, you know, closer by or speaking to potentially the supports they have got and going, okay, you know, what else can we do? Have we tried this? Um, And then if they are in the Taranaki region, then we've got um, other ways of supporting them more locally too. But it's very much that um, feeling that, or, you know, it's very much an open door Mm. so that, you know, if people are struggling, they can get in touch with us again. We've got an amazing journaling set up so people can log in, they can sort of write what they're struggling with or, um, you know, what's going on for them and they'll be buddied up with someone. So if they were buddied up with me, they would write, press send, I'd get a notification to say that they're journaled and then I can um, respond with some thoughts or ideas mm. um, kind of things. And again, you know, that's accessible to people from across the country. Mm. Um, so, all all yeah, ages really as well, Liz? All ages? or Yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So if it's, um, yeah, we do have young ones, if they're supported, you know, with an adult or from 17, they can come on their own. So yes, yeah, you know, we have had some families come together if they've had a shared grief that, you know, they're dealing with, um, or we've had some parent and child combinations. Um, So yeah, Absolutely. You know, again, it's a beautiful setting. We've got a playground there to, um, yeah, and a trampoline, although sometimes that's used for stress uh, relief as well for the yeah, grown-ups. Exactly. So, um, yeah, yeah, no, it is uh, It is available for all. And it's not just um, one of the myths that we've heard is that it's um, only for those that can't afford therapy or other forms of help Mm. and that's not true either you know struggles and curveballs come into our world whatever our situation is and so you know it's free across the board but it's you know it really is available um to everyone yeah so if um so how would people uh get connected with you though like i mean i'm wondering whether gps would ever think to say hey look i can see you're struggling this is a terrific place here's a contact like do you have people peppered around the place who are who are reminding uh you know those suffering that this is available yes absolutely so um you know we do have some great gps um and other therapists as well that 
are on board and get it and understand the benefit of it. And so, yeah, you know, we do hear of referrals through um, GPs, through other councillors, through, um, yeah, other mem members of the MDT. So, um, yeah, you know, there's absolutely, but again, it's getting the word out there and, you know, this is why we're really keen to um, get the message out that we do have people for stays across the country because, yeah, we're still a well-kept secret, which we don't want to be. We want a lot more people to know about us. Absolutely. Mm. And what is the actual official name? Is it The Retreat? It's Taranaki Retreat. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's taranakiretreat.org.nz. So, um, and, of course, you'll yeah, be on Facebook. Yeah, Facebook under Taranaki Retreat and Insta Instagram. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely ways that people can get in touch and uh, if people want to come for a stay or want to uh, inquire, then um, through the website there's a form that they can fill in and that can, e as, uh, that can be filled in on behalf of someone as well. So, you know, if you've got mm. someone that's struggling and they just don't have the headspace to fill out a form, then it can absolutely be done on someone's behalf mm. as well. Fantastic. So you mentioned off air when we were chatting this morning that, you know, sometimes people turn up in all sorts of different ways. They'll fly, they'll bus, they'll, they'll, they'll bike for goodness sakes because they know that they need something and, and you're there. And I thought that was a, that was a really nice, um, nice tale, uh, but also quite sad that so many people are needing help at the moment. What, what, do, you think, what do you think the ripple effect is really of, um, of this pandemic and, and COVID on, on mental health? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, you know, we do have uh, people find, you know, getting whatever their, um, you know, ways to the retreat. Um, we've had some people come yesterday uh, to start their stays and yeah, they were picked up from the airport. Um, but yeah, you know, we've seen an, a big increase in terms of the number of inquiries and support that's been um, needed. And it's very much um, the sort of, I guess, the key areas around is the sort of stress of, um, you know, the pandemic and, you know, potentially the extra uh, weights and loads that have been added into people's um, lives. You know, potentially they were just sort of getting by, just managing, and then, um, you know, uh, they may well have, um, you know, this ad added sort of stress has just caused them a lot more um, anxiety. Mm -hmm. And then also the sort of fear of the unknown. You know, we just certainly through it it was like well how long is this going to last and then we hear of another strain that's coming in and you know the borders and um you know when are people going to get to see relatives again you know just the ongoing stress and the ongoing uh, sort of uncertainty and un unknown mm. about it mm. um yeah you know and that's not something that's easy to recover because it's not over you know no it, it, we've still got sort of restrictions in place and different ways of being so you know when you haven't got sort of an end date to look forward to it's you know it can be really disconcerting mm. um for people and then um you know the loneliness side of it which you know even before the pandemic was um big for our society um these days is a subject that people don't like to admit you're to so and, right um, it's so bad yeah. isn't it loneliness is, yeah. is so bad for many people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's huge. And it's something that people don't like to admit to either, you know, and we've got a community cafe in here in New Plymouth and I was just talking to someone about it yesterday and, you know, he said, you know, this is this means that I can, I've got somewhere safe to come and I can have people around me, you know, because I do struggle with loneliness. And when I said that I've had that um, in the past because I'm from the UK or my family are back there and I'm here on my own and, you know, getting to know people and things. And he was blown away. He was just like, you get it. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. yes, mm. yeah, you know, absolutely. And so then, you know, people were struggling with that already and then chuck in a pandemic where we're isolated and then you know even after those restrictions are lifted people are going to feel um you know again More fear. That disconnection and yeah yeah, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. absolutely and you know they may have been reviewing actually you know who have i got around me and who are my supports or maybe they're going through mental health changes and just going actually the people that i've had around me aren't supportive they're on a different path or they're you know they're not um aligning with mm. where i'm at and i know when i um gave up alcohol it was really interesting to see who stuck around you know the connections that fell away and then yes you know new new ones coming into the mix 
So again, but in that transitional period, it can be like, well, yeah, you know, who am I and what am I and who are my people and where do I find them? Um, because, yeah, you know, as we get older, it's not easy to go out and, you know, meet people or... Make new friends, um, make et cetera. Those, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think it's, you know, it's probably put a magnifying glass on uh, issues in society that, you know, were there already, but have now just amplified it um, a lot, lot bigger. Oh, yeah. I reckon. And, you know, you're so right about that. You know, the friends who are there with you when you're the, the good time gal and, and all the rest of it. And when you're when you're flying high, that's all cool. But they drop away, don't they? Funnily enough, when, when perhaps they you sure might do. need them. And that happens to a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there were some because I used to often buy the drinks and um, because I wanted people to drink with, take them down with me. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, when I stopped, then it was just like, oh, okay, um, you know, moving on type yeah. thing. You're no fun so, anymore. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. But, mm. you know, a lot of people, when I do go out, don't realize that I'm not drinking because I gave up because I was actually enjoying life a lot more mm. and didn't want to waste my weekends being hung over. Sure. Um, so, yeah, a lot of people don't realise that I'm not drinking and I love being around, you know, in that sort of party party place. But, right. uh, yeah, it's just it's just interesting what, um, you know, different people's concepts. And, again, you know, for some people, like it would have done for me when I was drinking, mm. it would have highlighted and made me think, oh, oh, maybe I should do something about mine and I don't want to. Um, so, yeah, 100%. different paths, different... Yeah. Different journeys, you know, no, yeah. um, you know, each on their own journey. And mm -hmm. yeah, I had to get to a point when I was ready for mine. And that's the same for everyone. Different it's things for it's different confronting people. Yeah. for people, isn't it? When you suddenly change and you opt to live a certain way and they just can't handle it. It's very interesting. Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah. It's, yeah, very interesting. Getting back to, to um, the pandemic now. You know, we've obviously talked, there, there are so many obvious stresses and strains that have increased anxiety, but of course then you probably, are you getting people coming to the retreat who say, look, um, I, lost, I lost my job because of the vaccine mandates and now um, I can't get it back and I'm just so low because I've lost all my self-esteem and I don't know where to go to next? Yeah, absolutely. So some of, um, some of that side of it will be, um, yeah, whether it's through the mandates or whether it's through because of businesses having to close um, and, you know, not uh, not being able to run uh, for whatever reason, whether because we haven't had the tourists coming in. You know, there's so many different reasons, um, you know, or maybe people going, actually, yeah, you know, this hasn't been great. And, you know, what are the changes that I want to bring into my world now? Again, that magnifying glass comes in to show what's not working in my world and what can I do about it? I'm not prepared to carry on in this way. Mm. So, yeah, you know, a lot of, and, you know, a lot of, um, might be relationship breakup, maybe those uh, times in um, when we were in lockdown, you know, maybe again, highlighted relationship issues for people and they've gone, actually, you know what, um, this isn't what I want anymore. Mm. Um, and navigating that side of it. I think that's happened much more often than we actually realise. You know, in the last yeah. two or three years, I think I think that's, yeah, that's another that's another thing that people are dealing with. So there's so many things, and so um, so I'll just let people know we're talking with Liz Fry from the Taranaki Retreat, which is essentially a, a place we can go for five to a block of five days if you and it, and it's or a block of ten, and. It's free, which is incredible, but um, we'll talk about the fundraising shortly and what, what you're hoping to achieve soon. And uh, you can get that support, and also they're there for you in the future when you go back home to your busy lives and the, all the pressures you have from just day-to-day -day living. Because let's face it, modern life is rubbish, isn't it, really? <laughs> it really is. <laughs> you know, we'd be, all be better off living in huts by rivers and just kind of simplifying <laughs> everything right down. But, you know, there's so many petty, dumb little things that we fill our days with, aren't there, you know? And... Not just that. And then you've got the demands of, you know, animals, kids, you know, I don't know, every, everything. You've got to be everything to everyone, plus you have to keep fit and blah, blah, blah. There's, it's just like the whole world saying, you must do this and you must do that. And sometimes those voices just get too much, don't they? So I guess that's the sort of person who's seeking you out and saying, I've got to take a break. I've just... And that's what they get with you. So when, when you first arrive, do they sort of have time... Like if I turned up, would I have time to sort of um, just meet and have some solace for a day or two and kind of get your thoughts in order? Or can you adopt the program that suits you sort of thing? 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, the beautiful thing about it very much meets guests where they're at. So, um, yeah, we do suggest, you know, potentially taking it easy for the first couple of days to sort of ease into it, to recover, to, you know, get their heads around what's on offer. There's Star Attractions, which, again, are run by our beautiful volunteer team. Um, so people come in and offer their services, whether that's Pilates, whether that's mindfulness, whether that's something creative in our art cave. Mm. Um, I do some uh, coaching, different workshops. Um, so again, they can tap into um, what they're needing. So if they, you know, they might see a particular thing like uh, mindfulness, which may help with um, obviously the stress, which could help with COVID burnouts, and they go, actually, yeah, that's what I need. Um, you know, they may feel read one of the descriptions for one of the workshops and go, oh, you know, that's the tools that I'm after. Um, you know, or they might go, actually, I want to sign up to some of the creative or the art stuff because I haven't sat down and painted or done anything creative for however long. You know, and when it does give people a chance to tap into some of those hobbies or interests or passions that potentially have gone, you know, on the wayside, by yeah, the wayside. That's right. Um, you know, when stress comes in, it's oft all those things that are good for us is often the first, some of the first things to go. Yeah, dead right. Um, mm. So, yeah, you know, it really is. Um, and we have some people that just come and just, you know, uh, don't do any of the um, things that are offered and are quite happy to just sort of sit in their space and slow down and, um, you know, they might read, um, they might, yeah, go for a walk, they might go down to the beach. Um, and, but yeah, just that real time. And for a lot of people, um, you know, it can be the first time in ages that they have stopped and that they've had that uh, chance to pause and they don't have the responsibilities, um, you know, as you say, of kids and animals and partners and elk. Mm. a bit like oh okay so what do i do i'm not used to having this um space and not being busy pulled. um yes yep, yes yep, mm. absolutely because be, being busy and um you know it's just another one of can be another one of those band-aids that um you know like alcohol like drugs um like gambling you know keeping busy it's socially acceptable totally um, and people don't don't realise until they slow down that actually maybe there's some stuff underneath that um, could do with some some nurturing. Do you know, yeah. that is a very, very important point and I think we all are guilty of that. We all run around and we think we're, you know, uh, living fulfilled lives and when you sit in silence and, and things like that, that's when the, the stuff comes out, you know, and you're like, oh, yeah, I wasn't as good as I thought I was. Perhaps I did, yep. did need to talk to someone. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's again when the um, uh, what, um, magnifying glass uh, comes in because for some of those people during lockdowns, all those distractions and all those being busy things, they weren't able to do. And so it was like, oh, craggy, what is this stuff that's coming up that, Mm. Um, you know, I've been sort of pushing down or ignoring or wasn't even aware of potentially. Um, so, yeah, again, you know, that uh, could well be a reason why people are now going, OK, what yeah. is this? And, um, yes. you know, what am I doing about it? Yes. It's like, you know, I mean, and, and, and sadly, probably what will be really beneficial for some of the people go to the retreat is actually having a holiday, but they can't see their way clear. They wouldn't have the money, for one. They're so low that they can't you know sort of probably think about one you know day to the next and and that's hard and so you're in this fug and it's um you know this is what you're providing is that that step a, a kind of like a a pathway to to dealing with it all and and being supported yeah and and the sort of tools or ideas or links or connections to go a, a home with um at the end of it so yeah very much that uh, kind of time out feel but yeah with some sort of depth to it as well that's right R really really fantastic so september's an important month for the retreat because uh, you've got a lot going on because a raising awareness of your existence which honestly congratulate once again i mean i think i think what you're doing is is unbelievable it's just wonderful thank you um yeah i'm super passionate about it and I feel really fortunate um, for my path to have crossed uh, with the retreat four years ago. Mm. Um, so, yeah, definitely feel it was where I'm 
or meant is to where be. I'm meant to be. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so the door was opened in 2017. And um, yeah, we uh, were like, mm, that means it's five years this year and we want to celebrate this and celebrate that, um, you know, that milestone. And they were, celebrations were going to be earlier in the year, um, but with the obvious COVID, we have, have them lined up for September. And yeah, they kicked off last uh, Thursday on the 1st with a launch party for our events. And that was in our community cafe that we've um, got in our support hub in New Plymouth. Mm. And that was just amazing. Like we had live music, we had dance acts and um, silent auction and things going on. And because our community cafe is dry, we have no alcohol or drugs in there. Mm. Um, it was amazing. It was like, you can have this party feel with no booze. It's yeah. so cool. Yeah, great. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, that kicked it off. But you're absolutely right. You know, we... Um, get no government funding so we do do all the fundraising uh, ourselves and we've got um, generous p- people that support us with that um, so yeah we do need to find the money to keep the doors open for the next five years and beyond mm, absolutely um, so this is what uh, September is all about um, but you know possibly more importantly as you said earlier like getting that awareness of who we are what we do and who it's for out because um, yeah we we do take people from across the country and that's the message that we really want to get out mm. to more people um, and that's what uh, a lot of September um, events is about. Yeah. Mm. And so you've got lots of things peppered through the month, like you mentioned something about a bike, a bike-a-thon, something yep, like that? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so because um, this coming Saturday as well, Suicide Prevention Day, and it's really that sort of idea that um, actually, suicide prevention is everybody's business. We can't just leave it up to, um, you know, others to deal with it because, you know, what if it's our friend and we, you know, we don't know what they're going through or, um, you know, how, how can we talk to them? How can we reach out to them type thing? So suicide prevention really is up to everybody. And um, so, yes, on Saturday, we're very excited. We've got, um, we're doing a bike a So um, at our support hub, we're going to have three bikes um, from nine in the morning till nine at night where people can book in a slot and pedal their heart out. And then, um, but we're also inviting people from across the country to get out um, from Saturday to the following Friday, get out cycling, get out walking, get out dancing, get out running, mm. wheeling, whatever, you know, people's favourite um, sort of form of exercises and get in touch with your kilometres and how far you've travelled because we're wanting to get from Cape Rianga to Bluff um, and do the journey down the length of the country um, again to sort of spread that message mm. virtually so yeah you know people can uh, donate their kilometers and you know if you've got the opportunity to fundraise or get some sponsorship or donate some money then um, you know there's that option that we'd obviously appreciate as well but we'd love to hear from different groups across the country that we're getting involved with mm. um, our mission that would mean the world. Mm, yeah, wouldn't that? And, and you know, I'm just thinking, like, imagine the volumes of food and things and all the people required to do all the meals and, and what have you. you. And you're doing this on how many people again? A team of uh, 19? 19. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, we, yeah, it, no, it's, it's really the 200 volunteers. We can't um, forget them. Um, yeah, we mm. really wouldn't uh, be able to do it without them. But, um, yeah, it's... It's uh, it's a group of incredibly passionate people that yeah really sh- share that same passion, that same vocation of wanting to make a difference. And yeah, um, as I say, the majority will have had their journey and will have gone. Okay, I'm now in a place that I can give back some time or some energy or some skills or my listening ears or whatever it might be mm-hmm. um, to to the bigger picture. Mm. Yeah, which, which is which must be it must be super satisfying when, when you see someone off and uh, you see a change in in like a short period of five days, let alone ten, which I think would be I guess optimum, depending on on, on where you're at. Uh, you know, do you think you're going to get to a time where I mean, I guess you hate to turn people away, but have you had to do that? Um, it's usually. Um, well, <laughs> 
Uh, Tough question. There'll be something that, yeah. yeah, there'll be something, some way that we can support them with because a stay is not always the right time for people. Um, you know, maybe someone's anxiety is really high, and actually, if they manage five days, then you know they're doing great. Um, so yeah, you know, or it might be some of those commitments that um, you know they do need to tend with, or they may only be able to get five days off work. So mm-hmm. you know, whatever it is, it's that starting point. Um, but also. Um, you know, if for whatever reason people aren't able to make it for a stay, then, you know, we'd be very much looking at, you know, what can we do in the meantime? Can we set you up potentially with the journaling side of it? You know, right. what, are, what are the resources that are in your area? Yes. It's not just a cut and dry, not for you type thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, of course. So, yeah. So the feeling yeah, I'm know. getting from you, Liz, is that you come at this from a really deeply personal, caring, compassionate, empathetic level, which is uh, fantastic. Oh, um, yeah, it is my, it's, um, yeah, it absolutely means the world to me. And I I started with the retreat. It was only meant to be three months volunteering back in 2018. And um, that turned into six months volunteering. And then it turned into, um, Liz, we like what we're seeing. What do we do to make you stay um, conversation? So uh, that ended up with me moving to New Plymouth permanently. Um, <laughs> right. And yeah. <laughs> and here you are. Sort of history. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, but it is. It is something I'm passionate about. I think I've got, uh, I was reflecting on this recently with my brother that I, I've got a thing of not wanting to leave anyone behind and, you know, just the thoughts of someone going through that feeling of, you know, no one cares or, yeah. you know, they'd be better off without me or what am I even doing here? I've got no purpose. I don't belong. Mm. Like that makes me feel physically sick, you mm. know, the thought of someone going through that. And so, yeah, you know, it is about you know how we can reach more people and get to more people because sometimes you know it is just some small steps and small tweaks and belief that actually people do care and that you do belong on this world in this world and Mm. on this planet um that you know can start to help people get that glint in their eye i do a a coaching session for people that want it when they come to the retreat and you know at the end of the session um you know i sort of say what's a takeaway and so often um, people say hope, you uh, know, yes. and that's what a mm. lot of people need, you know, just that belief that actually it's not always going to be like this, that, you know, things can change and we want to be there to support people and find those, make those steps to mm. help them make those changes, whatever that um, looks like, you know, whatever people's struggles are going through, it, it doesn't have to be this way, mm. absolutely. You know, I'm imagining the place and I've sort of got the vis- vision of the mountain and, and you mentioned the sea. Like, uh, So there's, there's, you can't underestimate the power of nature to, can you, in, in healing and providing a, a safe sort of feeling for people. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, so, so powerful. And I think, you know, if you can't, you know, if you're thinking it can't even get five days away, like how can you get pockets of nature into your day so you know even going for a walk in your lunch break around the block or taking your morning coffee outside um for a bit and i think something really that was key in my healing journey and with loneliness is um we think of loneliness being um a connection with people but actually we can get that connection in other ways Mm. and nature is one of them and i remember when i was struggling with loneliness and I'd be feeling lonely and I'd go out on a walk and whether I'd be sort of saying hello to people on the walkway or whether I barely see anyone just being amongst nature and being mindful and spotting um you know cloud shapes or Mm. um you know listening to the bird song making sure that I didn't have any other music playing in my ears sure you know I'd actually come home feeling connected and feeling fulfilled um it wasn't like I'd just come home and then I'd feel lonely again it was just like oh actually that's met my need for connection Mm. so yeah you know nature can be beneficial in so many ways whether it's vitamin d or you know the fresh air or the exercise or chance to slow down and you know feet in the sand or the soil or the grass um yeah so so powerful such a natural 
um, sort of antidepressant healer and antidepressant yeah and it's like yeah. um, even just looking looking at a particular tree that you love for a while and kind of examining it or kind of you're right like uh, seeing a bird or I mean it sounds sort of corny but it actually does work looking at water being around water can be very very good as well I think yeah you yeah know? absolutely and um, I I started heart spotting so um, mm. you know just looking for you know, being more mindful of the surroundings. And it's amazing how many heart shapes are out there to show that, you know, love is around, whether it's in a puddle or in a cloud or on the tree bark or, you know, some of the randomest places. Sometimes I find it in the middle of a loaf of bread. Um, (laughs) I found it on an omelette the other day. Like there's heart (laughs) shapes everywhere. And, um, yeah, it can be a great reminder that we're not on our own. And, um, yeah, as I say, that we're absolutely loved and meant to be here. That's kind of a fun game to play, you know, to, to go out and find find a heart shape uh, or yeah, and see how many you can find, or whether it be in a cloud yeah. or, or whatever. Uh, that, that's that's kind of that's kind of nice. But yeah, I think walking. Um, I, I, I do think that is a great anxiety reliever for many people, and uh, sometimes people have to. It's interesting, you know, the days when you wound up are the days that you have to walk further and further to kind of bring that calm back. But it always works, I think, you know, um, to yeah. some extent. I mean, it doesn't, it won't, it's not, it's not everything. You need lots of other things as well if you're in a really bad place. But, uh, yeah, I, I do think the power of the walk is underestimated. Oh, 100%. Um, and Jamie, uh, one of the founders of the retreat, again, talks about exercise as being the best um, antidepressant uh, possible and I often talk about with people that um, you know uh, it's natural for us to be angry it's natural for us to um, you know uh, have some of those emotions and feelings coming up but again society doesn't allow that it's not the done thing to be angry um, you know or to have those uh, feelings come up and so you know we end up pushing them down stuffing them down um, you know sort of working over the top of them but if we can find ways that are safe and uh, wholesome to have that natural release, you know, get that heart pumping and blood moving um, a bit more and be able to release what's going on for us, then, um, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, we'll be able to do that um, in a way that doesn't hurt us or anyone around us. You know, I went for my walk this morning and, um, yeah, you know, I very much walk for that release and to uh, drop into my heart space um, as opposed to any other fitness benefits type thing. Um, mm. Yeah, it's just get get that stuff, get that funky, yucky stuff shifting. <laughs> That's and, right. Um, it's amazing how we can feel afterwards when we've yeah got that shifting and sweated some of it out um yeah doing that on a regular basis incredibly Mm. powerful liz i've got to tell you that i've just had a a beautiful text from anita who's listening in and she said taranaki retreat what an absolute blessing to be listening right now i'm waiting on hip replacement surgery and spend pretty much every day just sitting around here in rahotu just down the road from taranaki retreat thank you for reminding me why we are here in taranaki knowing not to give up blessings kiss kiss Oh, mm. do you like that? Made my eyes, yes. Something in your <laughs> Made eyes. My eyes leak a little. Oh yes, I know. I know. It's quite moving, isn't yeah. it? Oh, Anita, thank yeah. you. Thank you. So, isn't that beautiful? So, um, it th- is. Thank you for writing in, Anita, and and I really hope that uh, that surgery goes okay. It's it's hard sitting around, but I suppose if you're surrounded by um, powerful, beautiful. Um, nature then uh it can help and it's lovely uh, yeah so so look liz you know people uh yeah people are sending out the good vibes which is which is fantastic and so i won't uh, keep you too much longer but i just want to say i suppose we need to wind this up by saying um if you know someone who needs help what what's the best uh, avenue to follow and how best you know do they get in touch Yeah, absolutely. So it is through taranakiretreat.org.nz. There's on the top of the menu item, there's um, contact us. 
And if you scroll halfway down the page, um, there's a part that says looking for help. And yeah, if you follow that, it'll just ask some brief questions to begin with. Um, and yeah, then someone will get, one of the team will get either back to you. Well, yeah, we'll get back to you or the person that's filled out the form. And yeah, then it's a case of going from there and working out what those next steps are. Mm. But yeah, and you know, really recognizing that we get it, you know, that putting your hand up, asking for help is the hardest, hardest thing. So, you know, if you do know someone that's struggling and, you know, maybe they, maybe, you know, they used to post a lot on Facebook and there's been a, basically it's a change of behavior in some way. You know, maybe they always used to turn up on, at work, but now they started to ring in sick a bit more. Or, yeah, used to always post on Facebook, but you haven't seen them post for a while. Or you used to always see them down playing bowls but they haven't been for a while you know start right. tuning into some of those changes in people's behavior because um it is so hard to reach out for help but you know if someone comes alongside and just says hey you know i haven't mm. seen you around just wanted to check in you know if they're absolutely fine then they're still going to love the fact that you no checked harm in, done you know yeah exactly mm. exactly to, you know show that you cared um so yeah you know just having that vigilance that um yeah we are yeah, of the people around us um, and, uh, yeah, getting in touch with us, you know, mm. if you have got any questions. Sometimes people get in touch and fill out the form because, you know, they are worried about someone and then we can... Take it um, from there. You know. mm. Yeah, mm. yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's been uh, a really brilliant chat and uh, I wanted to, uh, you know, just thank you for, for so much time and uh, and also uh, I imagine that a lot of people are going to be wanting to support you both financially and, and or just with general, <laughs> you know, by, by reaching out to you and, uh, and, and well done and let's hope that we get to a situation in this country where... Um, you know, mental health isn't quite so uh, bad as it as it is at the moment. You know, but um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if people do want to support, um, again on the website, um, there's the option. Um, we've got to give a little uh, page. It's got our bank details on there. We would love some regular um, people donating. Oh, be it. So that, yeah, um, yeah. You know, um, but whatever works for people. You know, if people five dollars a month, we would really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, you know, but it is. Um, we very much have that value of inclusivity and, you know, it's about getting involved, getting part of it, sharing the word. Um, there's even a blog on the website of 55 ways of getting involved in September. You don't have to spend any money. You don't have to be in the area. But again, help us get the message out there and, um, yeah, reach the people that are needing our services right now. Totally. Liz Fry, it's been just wonderful. Uh, I just want to say arahanui and all the very best for the future. Uh, Thank you so much, Leanne. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it.